السلام عليكم ورحمة الله معكم دكتورة مجد الناظر هنبدأ دلوقتي نتكلم على الهيموفلاجيليت هيموفلاجيليت هي عبارة عن مجموعة الفلاجيليت which are present in blood and tissue like trypanosomes here with their stages the hemoflagellates are blood and tissue protozoa forming a large family of trypanosomatidae family دي بتنقسم على اساس انها كلها ليها spindle shaped body and the presence of kinetoplast giving one flagellum مش زي التريكوموناس ولا الحاجات اللي درسناها قبل كده اللي كانت ليها multiple flagellate لكن بالنسبة لل family trypanosomatidae ليها one flagellum only which extends along the body or arises from any part of the body giving at the anterior end a free flagellum um, only two genera of par uh, are parasitic to human of this family the trypanosoma and leishmania The following forms are named according to the position of kinetoplast and flagella. يعني عندنا مثلا الإبيماستيجو here has the kinetoplast central تقريبا ويطلع منه كده الفري فلاجيلا. عندنا هنا الإيماستيجو يعني مفهوش فلاجيلا. يعني موجود في كاينيتوبلاست بس without فلاجيلا وادي الكاينيتوبلاست هنا بقى التريبانو التريبوماستيجوت او التريبانوسوما زي ما بيقولوا عليه collectively ده بيبقى عباره عن كاينيتوبلاست في البوستيرور اند اللي هو ده طالع منه الفلاجيلا ماشي على السيل كلها as undulating membrane وبعدين طالع هنا anteriorly as a free flagellum وبنقول anteriorly علشان بنلاقي الموفمنت بتاعت الفري flagellum direct the whole cell يعني ده اللي بيبقى من قدام بيعمل حاجة زي turbulence في الفلويد وتمشي في السيل freely مش زي ال viscosity بتاعت التيشوز اللي موجودة حواليها Next, we here see a diagram for the hemoflagellates as a whole. And then here, the amostigot form with no flagellum, and this is the kinetoplast, and this is the nucleus. Here, there is a promostigot with a flagellum in the anterior end. Here, this is the anterior end. The anterior end and the free flagellum comes out and the body is elongate, not avoid like that of a mastigot. Then the epimastigot, where the, the kinetoplast goes somewhat posteriorly around the nucleus, and the free flagellum and the flagellum goes. In an undulating membrane, it takes a part of the cell membrane and moves under it, so it comes out as a free flagellum and has a part in the cell called undulating membrane. The undulating membrane looks like a fin, يعني زي الزعنفة اللي هي موجود فيها الفلاجيلم. بعد كده هنلاقي ده الفرايبوماستيجوت with the kinetoplast completely posterior and the undulating membrane covers the whole cell and this is the free flagellum anteriorly. This is a red blood cell show, so we can show the size of the hemoflagellate compared to the red blood cell. The trypomastigot is the biggest. It may be 
two or three times as long as, uh, as the diameter of the red blood cell, while the epimosty goat is nearly one and a half size of the red blood cell. The promosty goat is nearly the same size of the diameter of red blood cell, while the amosty goat, the smallest one, because it is intracellular mostly, and so it is just half the size of the red blood cell. Now we'll discuss the genus Trypanosoma. The genus Trypanosoma has two species which parasitize humans, which are Trypanosoma brucei, the African Trypanosomes, and Trypanosoma cruzi, which causes American Trypanosomiasis or Chagas disease. African Trypanosomiasis, which is Gambian and Rhodesian forms cause what we call sleeping sickness. This is caused by the septic fly, this one, and this is the shape of the panosomes of the African type inside the blood smear. It is called, the African trypanosomes are called polymorphic trypanosomes because, as we see, there is here the long forms, the intermediate forms or elongate forms, intermediate forms, and these are called the short stumpy form. The short stumpy form here has short flagellum also. The intermediate is intermediate between the elongate and the short forms. And here is the bar with two micromillimeter. Maybe this one has about 20 micromillimeter or more. This one is about 15 or 17 micromillimeter. This one has about 10 micromillimeter or slightly more. Now we'll discuss Trypanosoma brucei gambiensi. Trypanosoma brucei gambiensi causes the West and Central African sleeping sickness. It is morphologically identical to the Eastern type. يعني الاثنين بنقول عليهم polymorphic trypanosomes, trypanosoma brucea rubiziensi, and also the animal type اللي هو بيقولوا عليه trypanosoma brucei brucei. It causes a fever in animals called the Nagana fever in Africa. As we said, it is polymorphic, the long slender forms having about 30 micromillimeter, the short stumpy form about 15 micromillimeter, and intermediary form in between the two. It is bigger than Trypanosoma sensi somewhat. It is transmitted by the bite of the fly, Glossina falfalis, and its species in West and Central Africa. It is, its infective stages are injected with its saliva, يعني بنقول عليها anterior station transmission, يعني بيطلع من ال anterior part of the vector, and they are called metacyclic trypanosomes, يعني اللي عملوا cycle inside the Sitsi fly or inside the glossina and became metacyclic trypanosome. This is the life cycle of Trypanosoma brucei as a whole. We'll see here that 
the glucina or testicle takes a bite blood sample or a blood meal from the patient then here the trypanosomes divide inside the gut of the testicle they are called procyclic trypanosomes and they divide rapidly inside the gut of the testicle then go back to the salivary gland and stay there as metacyclic trypomastigos. When the sissy fly bites again another person, it injects the metacyclic trypomastigos, which are then carried to other sites inside the body of the patient inside the body of the patient they pass to the ependymal lymph nodes at first then they divide there multiply and then they come again to the peripheral circulation dividing in the peripheral circulation and multiplying then they pass through the blood brain barrier into the brain and the sinuses of the brain and multiply there and affect the brain with stages of coma to ending in severe uh, deep coma and sleep which they call sleeping sickness for this pathogenesis of Trypanosomes. In men, trypomastigotes of Trypanosoma brucei invade the ependymal cells in brain, ventricles, and pulmonary capillaries. They replicate as amastigotes there first. Then they leave at the stage of parasitemia. This explains the headache in the early infection. Lymphoid system invasion occurs causing generalized hyperplasia of lymph nodes or generalized lymphadenopathy and relative lymphocytosis. The reticuloendothelial hyperplasia cause, causes anemia and thrombocytopenia, which is increased accompanying the, by accompanying disseminated intravascular coagulation it also occurs more in the acute type as we'll see later. But all these symptoms can pass unnoticed as a slight fever in the brucei gambiense type. Then there is sustained hypergamma globulinemia with increase in IgM fraction. This is due to continuous changing of the variant surface antigen of trypomastigotes to avoid host immune mechanism, which is called immune evasion, by changing the various surface antigen. Yani, when the antigen is موجود, يطلعلو antibodies أو جسم يعملو antibodies, هنبص نلاقي هيحصل decrease in the parasites for a while because some only of them change the surface antigen then these when when they replicate and become abundant also the body rebuilds immune bodies against them so they also diminish and the new variant surface antigen trypomastigotes go again. This is what we call intermittent parasitemia. Then central nervous system invasion is marked by leptomeningitis with marked infiltration of lymphocytes and plasma cells in the Virchow-Robin spaces inside the brain 
Also, the CSF shows increased proteins and white cells with low sugar. The presence of trifomastigotes or trypanosomes in this place causes tissue destruction due to antigen antibody reaction as well. Both cellular and humoral immunity are depressed in patients with Gambian trypanosomiasis. This may contribute to the increased susceptibility to secondary infections characteristic for the disease. The patient may die from secondary infections like um, uh, septicemia, severe pneumonia, whatever, but not from the central nervous system disease in many of symptoms of African trypanosomiasis, the Gambian type. There is incubation period varying from few days to months, and indurated painful skin ulcer occurs at the site of bite of glossina called trypanosomal chancre. Trypanosomal chancre because when the ulcer occurs, it is clearly cut ulcer with some inflamed raised edges and the base is equal. So they call it chancre. It occurs and slowly disappears. After healing, it leaves an ulcer. Uh, sorry, it leaves a scar. Uh, the parasites can be found in the fluid aspirates of the chancre when it occurs. Asymptomatic low-grade Parasitemia then begins after the incubation period and lasts for several weeks. Infection may be aborted by that time if the immunity of the patient is very good. If the immunity is low, the disease continues to develop. Then fever begins with lymphatic tissue invasion and the generalized lymphadenopathy. It is irregular with night sweats, headache, malaise, nausea and vomiting, anorexia and general weakness. Fever lasts for several days and it is followed by an asymptomatic interval. Generalized lymphadenopathy occurs but more in the posterior cervical nodes which is called winter bottoms sign. Winter bottoms sign lymphadenopathy of the posterior cervical triangle and it is a pathognomonic sign for African trypanosomiasis especially the Gambian type and it is noticed by a slave trader اللي هو اسمه Winter Bottom ده وبعدين هو لما لاحظ ان الناس دول لما بياخدهم وعندهم الليمفادينوباتي ما بيكملوش معاه فبقى يختار الناس اللي ما عندهمش الليمفادينوباتي علشان دول هيبقى عندهم سليبينج سيكنس ومش هيكملوا معاها الرحلة لأمريكا تريبانوسونز uh, can be found easily in blood films and in lymph node aspirates by this type This is a picture of Trypanosomal chancre, but this one is healed, and here is the posterior triangle lymphadenopathy, which we call winter bottoms sign. Central nervous system involvement causes progressive meningoencephalitis increase of apathy, then confusion, then somnolence. يعني الواحد في الأول بيبقى يعني زي ما نقول كده متنح ما يفهمكش بسرعة uh, يتردد لما يجي يتكلم. Then there is confusion يعني ما يفهمش انت بتقول له ايه يبقى مش دريان بنفسه. بعد كده يبدأ ينام وهو واقف وهو قاعد وهو ماشي تبص تلاقيه مرة واحدة وقع نايم. There is extreme emaciation 
على اساس ان الانسان في الوقت ده ما بيفكرش انه يتغذى وياكل كويس with edema of the face may be due to hypoproteinemia motor changes as fibrillation of face fingers ataxia slurred speech are more marked than sensory changes also but there is pressure on the ulnar nerve or on the palms of hands causes severe pain sometime lasting after removal of pressure this is positive pyramidal sign this is also characteristic of the disease there is late in the late stages they, they show character changes and mental deterioration convulsions hemiplegia sometimes and paraplegia due to brain damage also there is incontinence to urine and stool followed by progressive coma diagnosis of the disease demonstration of trypanosomes in blood during parasitemia or tissue fluid aspirates or central or the CSF cerebrospinal fluid can be easy and they can be demonstrated during the stages of high parasitemia but as we say that the parasitemia is wavy sometimes there is low parasitemia with the new changes of the surface antigen and then replication and high parasitemia then the antibodies destroy these parasitem destroy the these trypanosomes and parasitemia becomes low again so in the stages of low parasitemia what can we do The clinical history and signs are also useful if we find a chancre, if we find generalized lymphadenopathy. Also, cell count and protein content of cerebrospinal fluid is highly suggestive. Also, the presence of morula cells of mud. These are plasma cells aggregated together and they are abundant in case of sleeping sickness. If parasites are not found in thick and thin blood films, they can be found in the buffy layer if we can centrifuge the blood sample in a hematocrit specimen. Um, animal inoculation is done to differentiate between Trypanosoma gambiense and Trypanosoma rhodesiense because Trypanosoma rhodesiense is more severe and more virulent and acute form so when we inoculate the animals they die quickly and also they there are posterior shifting of the nuclei which occurs to the, uh, and can differentiate between the two species um, serological tests as in immunofluorescent antibody test, the indirect hemagglutination, ELISA, as well as serum and spinal fluid IgM estimation can help in diagnosis. Here is a CAR test which is usually done as a screening test there in Africa called CATT or CART agglutination test for trypanosomiasis. This is a historical picture of the doctor doing spinal puncture here for a suspected patient. Epidemiology of trypanosomiasis. Trypanosoma brucei gambiense is transmitted by Glucina palpalis and Glucina tachinoides. These flies live in shaded streams and rivers near human dwellings and they are anthropophilic. يعني بيحبوا البلاد بتاع الهومن ب 
better than any other blood so they usually bite humans they also the infection is rather endemic and can be controlled by vector control يعني احنا لو شلنا الشجيرات اللي هي حوالين الانهار والينابيع الصغيرة ممكن ان احنا كده نعمل كنترول للديزيز also the treatment of infected persons can also help in controlling the disease Asymptomatic carriers are common and must be discovered and treated and these can transmit the disease. So the disease is mainly transmitted from man to man. Treatment. The usual treatment is Melby or Melarsoprol or Melarsan which is called also British anti leucide for treatment of all stages of the disease. But usually this is somewhat toxic and there are better medications than it. Suramine is given in early stages without central nervous system involvement. It is toxic with many side effects and it is the first treatment invented for African trypanosomiasis. Pentamidine is also effective in early stages but cannot cross the blood-brain barrier so it is the only drug in early pregnancy and it is conserved for the pregnant women only. Now the DEFCO, DFMO or eflornitine is a highly effective treatment in early and late stages of the disease and in cases not responding to mel b so it is the drug of choice now trypanosoma brucei rhodesiense trypanosoma rhodesiense as we say it magazan kidayani is more virulent species present in East and Central Africa. It is transmitted by Glucina morsitans and Glucina pallipidipes. We can say Glucina morsitans only because you may be confused between palpalis and pallidip. Its pathogenesis is similar to that of Trypanosoma brucei gambiense, but with rapid sequence and early central nervous system invasion. So coma may occur within half, one and a half months or in six weeks may coma occur. Uh, glomerulonephritis also occurs with deposition of the immunoglobulins which are present in blood in a good quantity or IgM in the glomeruli. Also, ECG changes similar to American trypanosomiasis can occur in both Gambian and Rhodesian types, but less apparent and more common in trypanosoma rhodesiense because trypanosoma rhodesiense, as we said before, can occur in the cardiac capillaries. The patient can die early from heart Symptoms of trypanosoma rhodesiense infection. The disease picture is much more rapidly progressive than Gambian trypanosomiasis. Patients frequently die before central nervous system changes. Incubation period is short. Fever and high parasitemia occur early. Lymphadenopathy is little and winter bottom sign may not appear because of the rapid course of the disease. فيش حاجة لحقة تتكون بسرعة. Cardiac arrhythmias, heart failure, pneumonia and pulmonary edema occur. Sometimes they are fatal. Glomerulonephritis causes generalized edema and proteinuria. 
there is rapid weight loss and central nervous system is involved early. Untreated persons can die within 9 to 12 months. Diagnosis seen as in Gambian trypanosomiasis. There is high parasitemia, so diagnosis is more easy. Differentiation between the species depends on locality of the patient, but in some areas like Uganda, both diseases are present, so laboratory animal inoculation is used. Epidemiology of Trypanosomiasis rhodesiense, Glucina morsitans and Glucina pallidipes are wild animal feeders, so present in open bushy areas. Dil manatik bitaat safari wa siyaha fi Afrika, ashan kida bihawlu yamilu control li disease as they as much as they can. Many wild and domestic animals can act as reservoirs for Trypanosoma brucei rhodesiense, like the gazelle, the zebra, the leopard, and the animals of the domestic. Sorry, the domestic animals of the natives here. This makes control difficult. Human infection is sporadic and can occur. In epidemics, sometimes no asymptomatic carriers are present, and the disease has acute course, so there are no uh, asymptomatic carriers. The treatment is same as in Gambian trypanosomiasis. Here we come to the end of the African trypanosomiasis. Hope you knew about it well. Hope that I can give you a good information about the disease and good luck.